good morning, and I want to welcome you all to the Sunriser. And uh, we are going to start a brand new series, a brand new series right here on the Sunriser. I'm your host, Pastor D.W. West, and today our subject is called The Magnificent Creation. The Magnificent Creation. And as we move into this new series, we're going to do something quite extraordinary, quite interesting. We're just going to quite just start going through the Bible and looking at what the Bible says. So today we're going to start in the book of Genesis. And in another day this week, we're going to take a look at a book in the New Testament. We're just going to start going through the Bible. And what I am trying to do here is I want to encourage each and every single one of you out there to start opening up your Bible every day. Open it up in the morning with us during the sunriser and keep reading it and spend that time with God every single day. Well, again, my name's Pastor D.W. West. It's a blessing to be here with you. And we're gonna have a word of prayer and move right into the magnificent creation today. Let's pray. Father, we give you the glory, honor, and praise. We ask for your help right now. We ask that you hide me behind the shadows of the cross of Calvary so that I am not seen nor heard, but that Jesus would be seen and that Jesus would be heard. And we'll be sure to give him all the praise and the honor and glory. We pray it in Jesus' name. Let everybody say amen and amen. I saw the room, the table set, my closest friend on my chest. I saw the towel around my waist, broken bread and wine were blessed. I saw my traitor choose the dark as he went into the night to sell me for a price. I saw the moon. The olive trees, my friends, all asleep. I saw the agony. Is there another way? Can this cup pass from me? I saw the keys. I heard the words. I don't know him. Search the crowd. My friends are gone. I'm all alone. And then. was too high to pay so I could be with you in the end can wait to drink the cup with you the tribe, he washed his hands, they screamed someone else's name, and even though they didn't choose me, I chose them, I saw the crown of thorns, purple robe, vile scorns, crushing weight of My broken heart nails pierce my skin. I saw the struggle for each breath. Felt the weight of the sin. I said the words, Father, forgive. Hell between heaven and earth. Before the Darkness filled the earth, 
as I gather all my strength just to say. brothers and sisters. Today we are gathered to talk about the magnificent creation of God. And as we look all around us, we can see the beauty of God's creation from the vastness of the sky to the tiniest little creatures here on the earth. Brothers and sisters, have we ever stopped to truly appreciate and understand the depth and the meaning behind God's creation well, this morning, let us dive deeper into Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 to 31, and we're going to discover the amazing truths about our Creator and His creation. So if you have your Bibles, open with me now to Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1. We're going to go ahead and start in verse 1. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 1. Genesis chapter one and verse one, the word of God says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth and the earth was without form and void and the darkness was on the face of the deep and the spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And then God said, let there be light. And there was light and God saw the light and that it was good. And God divided the light from darkness God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, so the evening and the morning were the first day. Then God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. Now, thus God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. And God called the firmament heaven, so the evening and the morning were the second day. Then God said, let the waters under the heavens be gathered together into one place and let dry land appear. And it was so. And God called the dry land earth and the gathering together of the waters he called the seas. And God saw that it was good. And then God said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb that yields seed and the fruit the tree that yields fruit according to its kind, whose seed is in itself on the earth, and it was so. And the earth brought forth grass, the herb that yields seed according to its kind, and the tree that yields fruit, whose seed is in itself according to its kind, and God saw that it was good. So the evening and the morning were the third day. Then God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heavens to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and seasons and for days and years. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heavens to give light on the earth. And it was so. Then God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also, and God set them in the firmament of the heavens to give light on the earth and to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness and God saw that it was good. So the evening and the morning were the fourth day. And then God said, let the waters abound with an abundance of living creatures and let birds fly above the earth across the face of the firmament of the heavens. So God created 
great sea creatures and every living thing that moves with which the water abounds according to their kind and every winged bird according to its kind. And God saw that it was good and God blessed them saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters and the seas and let the birds multiply on the earth. So the evening and the morning were the fifth day. And then God said, let the earth bring forth the living creature according to its kind, cattle and creeping thing and beast of the earth, each according to its kind and it was so. And God made the beast of the earth according to its kind, cattle and according to its kind, and everything that creeps on the earth according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air and over the cattle, over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image in the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. And then God blessed them. And God said to them, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the earth and, and, and subdue it. Fill the earth and subdue it. Be fruitful and multiply. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. And God said, see, I have given you every herb that yields seed, which is on the face of all the earth and every tree whose fruit yields seed to it, you shall be for food. And also to every beast on the earth, to every bird of the air and to everything that creeps on the earth in which there is life. I have given every green herb for food and it was so. And then God saw everything that he had made, and indeed it was very good. So the evening and the morning were the sixth day. This brings us to the end of chapter one of, of Genesis, of how God created the heavens and the earth and everything in it in just six days. And, and each day God spoke and brought forth something new and wonderful. And as we examine this account, we are going to uncover three main points about the creation of God the creator, the beauty of creation, and our role in it. Now, before we get to our first point, there's a few things that I'd like to read to you. There's a few things I just want to share with you. First, I want to share with you about creation days, evening and morning, evening and morning. In fact, millions of years, it has been claimed, were required for evolution of the earth from chaos. And in order to accommodate the Bible to this supposed revelation of science, the days of creation are assumed to have been vast, indefinite periods covering thousands or even millions of years. Such a conclusion is wholly uncalled for. The Bible record is in harmony with itself and with the teaching of nature of the first day employed in the work of creation is the given record. The evening and the morning were the first day, Genesis 1, verse 5. And the same in substance is said of each of the, of the first six days of creation week. Each of these periods, inspiration, declares to have been a day consisting of evening and also morning. Like every other day since that time, in regard to the work of creation itself, the divine testimony is, he spake, and it was done. He commanded, and it stood fast. Psalm 33, verse 9. With him, who could thus call into existence unnumbered worlds, how long a time would be required for the evolution of the earth from chaos? In order to account for his works, must we do violence to his word? Now, that's not all I want to read, because man was created to continually develop. You see, when Adam came from the creator's hand, he bore in his physical, mental, and spiritual nature a likeness to his maker, and God created man in his own image, uh, chapter 1 and verse 27 of Genesis. And it was his purpose that the longer man lived, the more fully he should reveal this image, and the more fully reflect the glory of the creator all of his faculties were capable of development and their capacity and vigor were continually to increase. So here we also see the harmony of science and scripture. When consideration is given to man's opportunities for research, how brief 
is our life? How limited his sphere of action. How restricted is our vision? How frequent and how great the errors are in our conclusions, especially as concerns of the events that are thought to antedate Bible history. How often are we supposed to have the deductions of science are revised or cast aside? With what readiness the assumed period of Earth's development is from time to time increased or diminished by millions of years? And how the theories um, how the theories advanced by different scientists conflict with one another. Considering all this, shall we, for the privilege of tracing our descent from germs and mollusks and apes, consent to cast away the statement of the Holy Writ, the Bible, so grand in its simplicity? God created man in his own image, and in the image of God created he him. Genesis 1 verse 27. So shall we reject the genealogical record, prouder than any treasured in the courts of kings, which was the son of Adam, which was the son of God, Luke 3 and verse 38. So rightly understood, both revelations of science and the experiences of life are in harmony with the testimony of scripture to the constant working of God in nature. Brothers and sisters, the first thing we want to do is take a look at our creator and the observation that I see is in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth and the earth was without form and void and the darkness was over the face of the deep. And, and then we see that God is the creator of the universe and everything in it. He spoke the world into existence literally out of nothing. Before he created the earth, it was formless and dark, and it was God who brought order and light into the world. Brothers and sisters, this shows us the power and the sovereignty of God. He is the one true God who, who controls everything. He is above all things and he has control over all things, brothers and sisters. And as we acknowledge and submit to his power, we can find peace and trust in him. Go on and say amen, somebody. You see, as we trust in him, we can know that he is in control of our lives. Go on and say amen. Now, that's just from verses one to, to two. And now as we look at verses three to 25, we're gonna look at the beauty of the creation. You see, on each day, God created something new and beautiful. He created the light, the sky, the land, the sea, vegetation, and animals of all kinds. And we see that God is not only powerful, but also creative and has a love for beauty. He carefully crafted every aspect of creation from the colors of the sky to the intricacies of every animal. And this reminds us that the beauty of this world is a reflection of God's character. And as we appreciate and marvel at the wonders of nature, let us give praise to God for his creative and loving hands. And as the stewards of this earth, let us care for and protect his creation for future generations. Which brings me to my third and final point for today. From verses 26 to 31, we got to see our role in creation. Our role in creation. You see, on the sixth day, God created human beings, male and female. Okay, in his own image, and he gave them dominion over all of the earth in every living thing. I wish somebody would say amen out there. You see, we see that we are uniquely made in the image of God, and we are given the responsibility to take care of his creation. We are called to rule over it with love and wisdom, not to exploit or harm it. And this teaches us the value and the dignity of every human life and how we are to live in harmony with God's creation. Let us be good stewards of this earth, using our resources wisely and caring for the environment for the glory of God. I'll say amen for you. This morning, 
We have explored the magnificent creation of God and the truths it reveals about our creator and what our role is here. And let us now turn our hearts to him and praise and give him thanksgiving for his wonderful works, brothers and sisters. You see, as we look at Genesis 1, verses 1 to 31, we, we see the, the beginning of the creation account. And if you take your books with me now and we go to the book of Psalm, we're going to the book of Psalms, and we're going to look at chapter 8. So we're going to go to Psalms chapter 8, Psalms chapter 8, and I'm going to look at just nine verses here, nine verses here. We'll study these a little bit more in depth later, but Psalm chapter 8, here's the whole psalm, the glory of the Lord in creation. O oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all of the earth, who have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of babes and nursing infants, you have ordained strength because of your enemies, that you may silence the enemy and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have ordained, what is man that you are mindful of him and the son of man that you visit him? For you have made him a little lower than the angels and you have crowned him with the glory and honor. You have made him to have dominion over the works of your hands. You will put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, even the beasts of the field the birds of the air and the fish of the sea that pass through the pass of the sea. O oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all of the earth. So they were a little lower than the angels. Next to the angelic beings, the human family formed in the image of God are the noblest of his created works and God desires them to become all that he made it possible for them to be and to do their very best with the powers that he had given to them. And we are here for a purpose. God has given us his plan for our life and he desires us to reach the highest standard of development. I'll go on and say amen for you. We're going to go to one more place. We're going to go to one more place and we're going to find it in the book of Colossians, the book of Colossians chapter one. And we're simply going to read two verses, 16 and 17. For by him, all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things and in him all things consist. So God's hand is always at work. It is not by inherent power that year by year the earth yields its bounties and continues its march around the sun. The hand of the infinite one, okay, is perpetually at work guiding the planet and it keeps God's power continually exercised and it keeps the earth in position in its rotation. It is God who causes the sun to rise in the heavens and he opens the windows of heaven and gives rain. Brothers and sisters, in conclusion, as we conclude let us remember the words of David in Psalm 19 and verse one, the word of God. The heavens declare the glory of God and the sky above proclaims his handiwork. God's creation is a constant reminder of his goodness, power, and love for us. Let us never take his creation for granted and continue to marvel at his magnificent works. Brothers and sisters, let us take time to appreciate and care for God's creation, thanking him and praising him for the beauty and resources he has given us. And as we do so, let us also remember to point others to the creator through his creation and share the good news of his love and salvation. And may we always be in awe of the magnificent creation of our God. Amen? Amen. Well, what a blessing it's been here to be with you all today. We're going to go ahead and close with a word of prayer. And I look forward to, again to seeing you all tomorrow morning as we continue taking a look at the word of God in the sunrise 
in the sunriser. Now, tomorrow, we're going to go to the book of Matthew. And we're going to start in the book of Matthew. And then the next day, we'll come back to the book of Genesis and continue our study here. Let's pray. Father, we give you all the praise, honor, and glory for the word that you have given to us today. We pray now, Father, as we part from this place, as we get on with our day, uh, that your word will be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Get us through this day and bring us back again tomorrow so that we can meet together again. And Father, we pray it all in Jesus' name. Let everybody say amen and amen. Now, if you're interested in knowing more or getting Bible studies or finding out about creation more, there's going to be a number that will pop up. You can text that number. You can call that number. You can ask for Bible studies, or you can even put in a prayer request. So make sure you do that. My name's Pastor D.W. West. May the Lord give you peace and grace, and we'll see you next time.